Hey, everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Uh, I'm here from the lovely Ed Sullivan Theater office building. My, my lady wife joins us this evening right over there. Hello. Hello. We are eight days from the election. And excitement is spreading across the country. If by excitement you mean coronavirus. Because, uh, yeah. They said the fall would get bad. And they was right. We're eight months into the pandemic. And I know we're all tired of it. I've already watched everything on Netflix. Everything on Hulu. And if anyone asks, everything on CBS All Access. But even though we're tired of the virus, it's still super interested in us. On Friday, the U.S. hit an all-time high in new coronavirus cases. It's April all over again. We're talking about Tiger King. We're learning how to regrow our scallions. And as far as we know, Smash Mouth hasn't killed anyone yet. Um, buddy. Hey, hell, we've got Sanjay Gupta on tomorrow. That's never a good sign. I hope he's here to talk about his new album. <laughs> Grooving with Gupta. Grupta. What? Huh? No, that's not it? Singing I'm with Sanjay. Singing with Sanjay. Oh, that's better than Grooving with Gupta? Enough from the peanut gallery, please. I got her over here. Tell me when the jokes are good or not. Hello. Okay, enough. With these record numbers, we've officially entered the third wave of COVID-19 in the U.S. Okay, but that's a little misleading. Because if you look at the chart of COVID waves, the bottom before the third wave is as high as the crest of the first wave. It's not really a third wave if the first wave never ended. Like, like how every Rocky movie starts with the end of the last movie, so there's technically only one very long Rocky movie. And just like in Rocky, the main character talks like he spent half a lifetime getting punched in the head. But this disturbing news brings us to our newest segment, Catch a third wave, endless bummer. Corona bunga, dude. You wanted me to rehearse that? I was, we almost had to rehearse that. What do you think I couldn't handle that level of graphic? Are we long? Are we going, am I going long right now? Part, part of what makes this latest wave of the first wave so hard to contain is how widespread it is. Hospitalizations have jumped in at least 38 states in the past week. In response, this weekend, the White House dispatched chief of staff and last boy picked for the White Pride kickball game. <laughs> Mark Meadows. Yesterday, Meadows went on CNN to reassure a worried nation that you're on your own. We're not going to control the pandemic. Okay. That, that was a shorter clip than I thought it would be. Okay. So, after eight months of not really trying, now they're just giving up. That's not good. That's like if Mothers Against Drunk Driving changed his name to Mothers Who Realize, hey, you got to get home from the bar somehow. <laughs> of course, the most infectious part of the country is the Trump administration. At least 30 people associated with Donald Trump caught the virus, including the president and the first lady themselves. And now at least five of Vice President Pence's aides have tested positive for the virus. The new infections in the vice president's inner circle include his chief of staff, his top outside political advisor, and his body man. By the way, body man is the aide who is with the vice president at all times, uh, taking care of his needs, and not, as I previously thought, the least popular member of the Justice League. Ironically, Pence is the head of the coronavirus task force. This reminds me of that fire safety PSA. Only you can stop forest fires, because I've stopped trying. <laughs> so far, Pence is not tested positive, but the CDC recommends that people stay home for 14 days following possible exposure. But Pence is going to keep campaigning anyway. The White House justifies it by claiming that Pence is an essential worker. What are you talking about? He's vice president. At best, he is vice essential. He's America's spare tire. You want him in the trunk, but you hope to never have to use him. FDR's vice president, John Nance Garner, who you've never heard of because he was vice president, once said, the vice presidency is not worth a bucket of warm spit. 
And I'm guessing a bucket of warm spit is what Pence is going to get when he orders soup in a restaurant. Trump isn't letting the COVID surge stop him from campaigning. Oh, no. Between Friday and today, he has held 11 campaign events, including nine rallies in seven states, Florida, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Ohio, New Hampshire, Maine, and Pennsylvania, or as historians will call them, the Corona Belt. He spent the weekend blaming the pandemic on the media. They prolong the pandemic. That's all I hear about now. That's all I hear. Turn on television. Right? COVID, 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 COVID. By the way, on November 4th, you won't hear about it anymore. Well, I won't hear anything on November 4th because either way, I'll be hung over. But I can say this much. I won't have an audience. I'll still be stuck in this room for some reason. But Trump didn't just rail on the media for talking about COVID. He also blamed them for how they talk about all these new cases. Use the word case because you're trying to scare people. Don't scare people. Don't scare people. The fact is that we're doing very well. Now, the good news is we know where it may be. The bad news is anytime you test, you're going to come up with cases. So the good news is we know where it is. The bad news is everywhere you look. But as unimportant as he says this plague is, Trump assured his supporters that he's the only guy to handle it. We understand the disease. I understand it better than you. I had it. What the hell was that all about, right? <laughs> Sir, you've tested positive. I said, tested positive for what? How many things does he get tested for? <laughs> tested positive for what? The clap? The herps, which hepatitis do I have this time? A, C, I hope it's double D's. It wasn't all COVID. Trump also talked about the election and tried to appeal to an important voting bloc, seniors. Biden's plan would mean America's seniors have no air conditioning during the summer, no heat during the winter, and no electricity during peak hours. It's true. Okay, if you're just going to make stuff up to scare the oldsters, why stop there? No heat, no AC, Biden's going to pierce your granddaughter's nose, he's going to cancel Wheel of Fortune, he's going to outlaw those crocheted things you put over the toilet paper on the back of the toilet seat. The toilet paper is going to be naked and catch a cold. Trump hit the road again today, and in Allentown, Pennsylvania, he let slip his most appealing campaign promise. I think I have the trucker's vote. By the way... Nice trucks. You think I could hop into one of them and drive it away? I'd love to know. Just drive the hell out of here. Just get the hell out of this. I had such a good life. My life was great. Mr. President, I think I speak for many Americans when I say, get the truck out of here. Hey, Halloween's coming up. Let's talk about Christmas. Thanks to a report in the Wall Street Journal, we've just learned that the White House wanted to give early COVID vaccines to mall Santas. Well, mall Santas do have dangerous comorbidities like cherry nose and bowl full of jelly belly and uh, alcoholism. <laughs> Apparently, knowing laugh of a woman who has taken children to a mall Santa before. Apparently, the Santas were supposed to be part of a series of pro-Trump COVID response PSAs that were going to cost... $250 million in taxpayer monies that Congress had previously appropriated to the CDC. But don't worry, Trump's going to pay back that quarter of a billion dollars with his own taxes, okay? Let's see, it's $750 per year, $250 million. He'll pay that back in... Never. <laughs> totally worth the wait. <laughs> totally worth the wait. That doesn't get cut. That stays in. I don't care how long we go. Cut, cut, cut Sasha Baron Cohen. That joke stays in. <laughs> These pro-Trump propagandists put together a list of 30 big-name celebrities who would go on camera to say how great everything was going, and everyone should just cheer up. The wish list included Taylor Swift, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga, Billy Joel, Britney Spears, Bruno Mars, Bon Jovi, Madonna. But they only managed to recruit Dennis Quaid, CeCe Winans, and Hasidic singer Shulam Lemmer. <laughs> Which is kind of like when you ask for an Xbox for your birthday, but instead you get Hasidic singer Shulam Lemmer. 
I'm sure he's very talented. Dennis Quaid later dropped out. Randy Quaid's still available. So it looked like the PSAs were going to be a little less celebrity focused. That's where the Santas come in. The administration wanted the Santas to appear at regional events promoting the Trump vaccine program and featuring beautiful educational films. Beautiful educational films. Santa comes home from work early to find Mrs. Claus making more than Rudolph's nose red. You know what I'm saying? Tasteful, but kids got to learn somehow. The organizer of this whole thing was disgraced HHS spokesperson and man prepared to ante up for this game of strip poker, Michael Caputo. We're finding out about this plan thanks to Rick Irwin, chairman of, and this is their actual name, the Fraternal Order of Real Bearded Santas. Oh yeah, that's a tough gang. You know the rule, nog in, nog out. Snitches get blitzing. Irwin recorded his call with Caputo and on the tape, Caputo offered the Santa performers early vaccine access ahead of the general public, to which Irwin replied, since you would be doing Santa a serious favor, Santa would definitely reciprocate. That's a clear case of quid pro ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that joke from little Richie Dom, age eight. <laughs> Thank you, Richie. Caputo told Irwin why the Santas were first in line for the vaccine. If you and your colleagues are not essential workers, I don't know what is. Okay, so you don't know what is. Sorry, teachers. Sorry, nurses. We got to protect the men who do the essential work of making babies cry in front of the orange Julius. This weekend, it was announced that the program was being scrapped, and it was a tough blow to Santa Americans. Irwin said, this was our greatest hope for Christmas 2020, and now it looks like it won't happen. Don't worry, Santa. You might not be back for Christmas, but if vaccine experts are right, you'll be coming down our chimneys on the 4th of July. We've got a great show for you tonight. Later, I'll be talking to the great Jeff Tweedy, but when we come back, Sasha Baron Cohen is here to talk about the new Borat movie. Stick around. Thank you.